I straight up press them, something like a steam clean. Yo, we the dream team. Check out the slam like you was mean gene. Bodies on the set, I leave the scene clean. Nowadays, they took hate and they made it cool. I play it cool like Dame Dash and paid in full. Yeah, talk major bull, but couldn't swallow a plate full of food for thought. So flavorful, Arkansas, wicked in the city. Kiki never loved me, she busy doing the shiggy. I leave him dizzy, you probably thought I slid him a Mickey. Following my footsteps, Mike Taylor Achilles, silly. A million watts on the drop, what I'm putting out. Veteran stamp, you living off your rookie clout. Talk money on the wood, good looking out. The flow like a sniper shot, took your woofers out. We are back with Ammo Wrestling Episode 71. Coming to the ring first in this fatal, fatal four-way elimination match is one and only Joshua Lockhart. Tonight, Coda Riley. Do you smile like you've been told a secret? Now you're telling lies because you have sworn to keep it. But no one keeps a secret. No one keeps a secret. Why when we do our darkest deeds? Participant in this matchup, he is one half of the race. He is Alex Hero.
the final participant in this matchup here tonight. Christopher Garcia. Four participants now inside the ring. As the ref calls for the bell, this matchup should be highly entertaining. So many tag team and junior specialists in this matchup here. Everybody in this match is a junior. Everyone in this match could also potentially be in a tag team. There's no requirements for that other than another person and all you got to do is just find someone willing to go to war with you but it'll be interesting here tonight to see just exactly how everything goes as we see Alex Hero and Joshua Lockhart inside the ring right now as the two tag team guys and oh working on the leg is Joshua Lockhart No, going for a big kick. Instead, it is stopped. Caught the leg of Alex Hero, flipping him over into an ankle lock. As Joshua Lockhart representing that sort of technician-styled faction with Tilly Barker, Dante Ashford, and Donovan McNeil. Of course, we haven't seen a whole lot of Donovan and Tilly has been on the outskirts of the group based off of her title reign in the women's division that was helped acquire. By Donovan McNeil at ringside, but Tilly able to showcase exactly what she can do on her own. And now Joshua Lockhart with a pile driver on the inside, calling Alex Hero back up to his feet, possibly looking for that heart lock, and yes, locking it in, as I just, Alex Hero able to evade it fairly quickly after it was locked in. Going to the outside of Cota Riley, Christopher Garcia, two guys who have fought very recently for the junior heavyweight title. This could be a huge opportunity for them to get back in that title contendership, as well as just showcasing to each other exactly who, and oh, big jump there by Coda Riley. Exactly what they're made out of in this division, showing everybody what these divisions are made of. And Alex Hero, big elusive maneuver to the outside, hopping back in. Christopher Garcia, Coda Riley, about to spill back to the outside, it seems. But no, Coda Riley with a big forearm. Of course, Alex won half of the race, fighting for those tag team titles. Most recently, at our previous pay per view, Unable to come out with those titles as the pit crew remain tag team champions. Of course, the pit crew No, oh, did we just get a three count? I believe that might have been the case as Christopher Garcia might be out of this matchup. It's hard to follow everybody in and out missing that maneuver. But I believe we are down to three and with this pile driver to Alex Hero, we might be down to two already. But now getting him up, Dragon Suplex, one, two. 
as I was talking about, both members of the tag team champions heavily evolved in this main event in the past two weeks as Mike Rumby nearly qualifying for his no more contendership against the now number one contender in Kenji Kobayashi. But right now, Joshua Lockhart continuing to put on some dominating offense as Alex Hero getting him up in that Yosaka Street Cutter position and all the way down into the neck breaker. One, two, and just a two count. Big knee lift to the face of Alex Hero as Joshua Lockhart looking to finish him off and that big knee strike straight to the side of the head. One, two, three, and we are down to two. Joshua Lockhart and Coda Riley. Lifting his hand up in the air. Joshua Lockhart feeling confident as this might be a road back to those tag team title shots as it would truly be something to see every member of this sort of faction hold gold as we see another pile driver there. Lockhart lining it up, and another skull rush straight from his knee. One, two, but no, this time. Kota find, finding his way out of the matchup. Or, not out of the matchup, out of the pin. Is now Kota getting him up, and oh, dropping him. On that bottom turnbuckle, face first, eats all of it. Now, slowly looking to pick off the arm is now, crazily enough, the two men remaining in this match are the more technically sound, technically gifted members from the beginning. It's Coda looking for a way to possibly lock in and just tear away at the arm of Joshua Lockhart. But now Coda Riley breaking free, but no, Lockhart Irish whip. Going for a drop kick, countered. Both men squaring off, catching him into a regal plex. Now Lockhart going up to the top rope, not something you are used to seeing from Joshua Lockhart really trying to pull out everything he can and going elbow drop straight to the back of Coda Riley. As Coda Riley needs to call a chiropractor at this point, just right in the middle, cutting everything in half, but somehow finding a way to continue in this matchup and not only continue, but to thrive with that drop kick lighting up the chest of Joshua Lockhart and sending him no I thought he was about to send him back inside the ring for the cover but now Joshua Lockhart able to reverse getting him up and over strike after strike and now Joshua Lockhart Oh, head right off the apron. He's going to need to find a way to get him inside the ring soon in doing so. Lockhart might find his way to capitalize. And calling him up onto his feet. Looking heart lock all the way in. And Coda Riley has to tap. Joshua Lockhart walking in to this matchup. Fully equipped to face absolutely anything and everything and does so. 
everybody try to showcase the best parts of their ability. But at the end of the day, one man was left standing, and that man was Joshua Lockhart. Moving on now to our next matchup of the evening is scheduled for one fall. Coming to the ring first, he is Franklin Stein, Luke Franklin. And his opponent, he is the Chilean God, Brutal Nature Incarnate, Richard Corvo. Como una marca en mi piel, es aquello que fundamenta mis ansias de romper cualquier frontera pura tinta y papel. Solo música selecta, directo desde un alma que se expresa así. Venimos de donde las cosas se hicieron profe, de una manera en que ningún otro lado se ve. Unidos fuertes como un puño, hermano, nos mantiene el rap. Esta es la unión verdadera. Na, 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 na. Yeah, yeah. Ah. Si te dicen que es poco real, con qué fundamento es Nada te satisface, entonces qué va a proponer Otro agente de internet, de esta letra libre fe Fe, asientes el nivel, su esta gente afírmense No por tener más cifras va a ser un ídolo Tú quieres poner muros como Trump en la frontera de México Y en el hip hop, lo primero el respeto Lo segundo no enviar a nadie y luego hacer algo en concreto Porque mierda fingen tanto siempre frente al mic Solo quieren ser más fichi, son de feature price Yo, liderar no es liberarse, criticar Hoy no te hará parecer interesante Se trata de unión, constancia y rigor Trabajo, sabes que está de sobra O a consulta de los pacos Si obvias el concepto, tú estás ciego de hace rato Perdí la fe en Dios, pero el hip hop es un milagro No creo mucho en Dios, pero este es el nivel Siento cosas con el hip hop que no puedo ni entender Como puedo creer en algo que no puedo ver Y ahí recuerdo que amo el rap aunque no me da de comer Porque qué sería de mí sin un papel Un boli pa' tatuarle con amor lo que susurra el timonel Porque yo vengo de rock a granel, de vender discos a los chumas pa' poder comprar la aceite a María Esther. Yo no pienso olvidar el chamaco aquel, que rapió en Alamar, la madriguera y hasta en el café de Ariel. La causa dos estaba sonando huel, porque en la unión está la fuerza, que sería de Cervantes sin Miguel. Las palabras peligrosas en un foto... Going from junior tag action to some heavy weight bouts. It's Luke Franklin, Richard Corvo, two heavy hitters as both men looking to find a way to utilize their major strikes to benefit them in the long run. Oh, punch straight to the back of the head by Luke Franklin. I believe this is the first match we have really seen Luke Franklin shine in post subway. And oh, going for. That power slam right off the bat. But now Richard Corvo, of course, talking about Subway. Going to have a little cheeky plug for Sebastian Ramos, who has gone over to Fireball. As we will have more Fireball content in the near future. If you are curious to see, check out my element. And it's just a really fun product. I recommend you watch. But right now, Richard Corvo, Luke Franklin down 
Nearly choking him out still. Beginning of the match has gone so far to Richard Corvo as is now working in that Mamble Claw right to the trap, that neck area. But Luke Franklin getting up and just a big hammer to set himself free. As now Luke Franklin looking to showcase some of that power and just tosses Richard Corvo nearly halfway across the ring. Getting him back up on his feet though, Richard Corvo back in this game already, going for an uppercut, swinging wildly, but Luke Franklin able to evade himself this early on, possibly looking for one of those power bombs, but instead reversed there by Richard Corvo, as now Richard's got him up on his feet, no, brute force straight to the chest. Gonna have to find a way to drag him out from the ropes for that pinfall, and doing so now, Two count, but no. Able to get himself free before the count of three is Luke Franklin. Uh oh, up and no fireman carry reversal there by Luke Franklin. Continuing to keep everything in touch. As right now, this match, we have to be considering it. For that pure wrestling title, as you see, both men very hard hitting, very sound. And now getting Luke Franklin back up on his feet, but no, Luke Franklin going blow for blow, neither man wanting to budge at all, and now Luke Franklin stands up top, as you can see. And up in the air, dropping the knee now. Fully just on display now. Trying to find a way to connect with everything. Getting him up in the air. And the symphony rains down. For Luke Franklin. Dragging him to the middle of the ring. One, two. But no, only a two count as this match continues on. Calling him up on his feet might be looking for that pop up power bomb. And is doing so off the ropes. Pop up down! Spiking him with authority. But still only a two count for Luke Franklin. But now getting him up back on his feet just to toss him once again across the ring. Trying to rile Richard Corvo back into this matchup and is doing so very well. Both men now spilling to the outside of the ring. But no, going for that wild punch, getting caught by Luke Franklin into that suplex, and now over in the corner, looking for that discus punch. And oh, swinging, but no, caught by Richard Corvo. Sending him back in the corner that he was charging up that punch. And just choking him in that bottom rope once again. 
The ref already giving him a warning about not doing that, but it might be too a little too late as we see brute force for a second time. Right on cue. But just four, two. We try to rhyme on commentary as much as possible. But now Richard connecting every piece. Getting that momentum back on his side. Going up top rope. Double axe handle straight to the dome. Getting him back up on his feet now. But no, back and forth. I was expecting to see brute force in the action, but instead, or even one of those choke slings, but now, Luke Franklin dropping him with that symphony of power bombs once again. We are looking at seven power bombs at least from Luke Franklin in this matchup. And no, just a two count still, as Richard Corvo looks to be defiant in the face of opposition. But right now, Luke Franklin looking to end it all off the ropes once again. Pop up power bomb. One, two, three, Luke Franklin. Able to connect for a huge victory here tonight. What an absolute clinic of matches we have seen already tonight. That's Luke Franklin with a big win as his sights remain unknown. But despite his unknown future, he can at least appreciate what he can do here in the present as we move on to our next matchup of the evening. for our third matchup of the evening as we move to women's action. Coming to the ring first, the punk icon, Courtney. Bye. 
opponent. No ordinary girl. Selena Violet. Matchup getting set and underway now. Both women kind of looking at this whole Angel Dust championship thing from the outside, but looking to possibly infiltrate and get their hands back on that title as both women, former champions. Right now, Selena Violet all the way around DDT. Spiking right on the head of Courtney, but Courtney back up on her feet already. That's Selena rocking a new look in this matchup. And oh, moving all the way back around Regal Cutter. Selena. I believe she still might have the record for longest single reign with that women's title but right now. That is in the past. What is right in front of her is Courtney as she's slowing down the pace trying to Get a hold. Of this matchup with Courtney very defiantly fighting back now. Off the ropes. Oh, no, big knee strike, but it took a sec for Selena to hit the ground off of that one. And now just hammering away with that, those loaded punches from Courtney onto Salinas. Courtney now looking for a cover, really trying to take control of this matchup here. And oh, Selena up, her Karana takedown. And no, now Courtney driver straight top of the head of Selena dragging her into the middle of the ring looking for the cover one but no early kick out there by Selena out of pure annoyance maybe and now that DDT straight back to the head of Selena one two and no, still just a two count. And Courtney's offensive game plan in all of these matches as of late has just been to target the head, really highlight and try to damage every single part that she can. But now, Selena sending her into the corner, but no ducks underneath, kick to the middle, kick to the back of the head. And oh, back and oh, big uppercut there as Selena over into the corner. But no, back into this pile driver position for Courtney. And taking this moment to taunt, not even looking for the pinfall just yet. And now doing so. One, two, but no. Selena still 
defiantly back up to her feet already. And some big back elbows from Selena. And now Selena looking back, slide driver. Trying to hype herself back up, get back into this matchup however she can, but Courtney having everything, it seems, scouted. And whiplash back from that top rope. And grabbing around that DDT once again. One, two, three. And Courtney picks up the victory here tonight. Courtney really showing her defiance and what she's made of here tonight. Can she keep up this momentum long enough to get back in that title picture? We will see. But for now, all she can do is enjoy this victory as we move on to our next matchup of the evening. Episode, this would be the main event, but because we got some thick boys these next couple weeks coming to the ring first, the King of Father Style, John Willikers. opponent he is your pure wrestling champion Tristan Silva I'm from the streets of the BX burn with this push pack this is that sir that full fleck Al Boat Raul you heard me Macho Jigga Brown JB Charlie Rock LD, Remy me more, uh, Sam Boy, turn it up right here, man. Yo, yo, uh, I'm your idol, your highest title, numero uno. Yes, I'm Puerto Rican and I'm speaking so that you know. Star, yeah, that's the idea. Be that leaking from ear to ear. Listen here, young bro, man, your end is near. They got it. Find your body at the end of the pier. Must be crazy to mistaking me for folklore. I put the 80 to your baby, man. I told y'all. We cracks like and we crack. One, pull of the pipe or push your way back. Look, you hate that. Look, we stay strapped with crook from way back that took the game back. You should remain fat, top of the world. This match now getting underway. And oh! Running super kick right on the mark. And Tristan looking to show off that power and what has made him a champion. Right off the bat. And looking to do so. Already locking in an armbar on John. 
as John has been just a bystander of this matchup so far, has not really been able to participate, I think, as he would like right off the bat. And now, no, still getting caught by Tristan Silva. He got dropped down. It's Tristan sort of just looking at him. But John getting all the way around, and what a launching suplex of a German that was. And now John dragging him away from the ropes, grabbing him once again for a second, this time back suplex. An old big uppercut there, and no caught the leg. John Willikers as he's being able to counter this sort of onslaught of offense and another back suplex this time holding on as we're gonna see a German and a just standard suplex as John able to unfold everything very quickly as Tristan Silva rolls outside of the ring I'm going to get back inside, caught an up and over into a camp up. And oh, an air raid crash following through, but John Willikers and seemingly unfazed by it. And now Johnson over into the corner, going big, but instead not being able to catch it. It's now John. Looking to set up on Tristan Silva, up and over once again, a deal toss. And oh, big clothesline, as these two men have been absolutely silent in the ring because their actions have been screaming this entire matchup. It's just both men highly focused on the task at hand, and that task is beating their opponent. On one hand, you have a man with one pinfall loss. And I'm not even sure if he was the one pinned. And then you have the former number one contender for that Ammo World Championship as John looking for Tristan Silva to get back up on his feet. Datitude adjustment all the way down. And but in the ropes as this match forcefully continuing. And oh, looking to trip him up, getting back up on his feet now. Oh, big knee strike. As Tristan Silva looks to answer with some extra gusto as well. And one, two, no, just the two count. As this matchup continues on. Ducked down off the ropes is now Tristan Silva. Looking to piece together all forms of offense to get fully in control of this matchup here. Was that goal realized? We'll have to see, but right now John Willicker is fighting to get back in this matchup, but Tristan back and forth action between both men. And oh, big boot straight to the face. It's Tristan calling him back up on his feet, leg cut. And John into a moonsault. The King of Fathers style. Just simply built different in so many aspects. 
that fatherhood strength that is a strength only possessed by fathers can't train to get it but right now John putting on that clinic against Tristan Silva Getting him over into the corner, looking spear. Cuts him in half as he looks. One, two, and no, just a kick out. Trying to get him back up on his feet as now John running off those ropes. and puts him straight down. Getting him back up on his feet. Oh, possibly looking for that bitter end, but instead caught German. And this time Dragon as both men having the ability to combo up these suplexes in the Florida Keys. By Tristan Silva, big kick straight to the face. Dazes. John Willikers is John Willikers still staying alive in this matchup and now the drop kicks back and forth and once again as John folds this time back down to the mat but now John all the way underneath back suplets off the ground that deadlift one two no still just a two count the resolve and resiliency of both men in this matchup quite frightening at times as that attitude adjustment hits once again one two and still just a two count in my mind I counted three ref and Willikers disagreeing but you have to stay on your opponent especially when that opponent is the pure wrestling champion as John Willikers up in the air as Tristan Silva walks around drop down to the suplex wall, but no, his foot grabbing a hold of that rope. It's a point of positioning you have to fully be aware of in every situation. But right now, oh, big clothesline. As we're looking to roll it out once again for Tristan Silva. One, two, no! Back and forth with the near falls. Stomping the head. Tristan off the ropes, big knee lift into the neck breaker. And continues to stomp. But now, Submission hold in the ropes once again. Tristan's got to be wary of those ropes to continue in the manner that he has. All the way up in the air once again. Drop down. Reversal there. No oh, big shoulder tackle. Just that ability to move. Now the takedown at the knee, getting him up in the air. Catching that leg once again. And just to return the favor, looking for that knee, possibly working him all the way down to the ground as John and Tristan meet once again up in the air. And oh, powerbomb position. Powerbombs Tristan all the way. That's like at least 
a 15-foot drop in my mind. I don't know how tall that actually is. But I feel like that's... That is quite a drop to take straight to the back of your neck. But somehow Tristan, whether it's his title mentality or where he just feels like he has to remain at this current level, at this current record at all moments, is now working down, possibly trying to make John tap to the outside. That's not how this matchup is going to go. But now up to a count of six. It's both men back inside the ring. And oh, big. Big strike. Dropping him down to that middle rope. And oh! Pulls him off of the corner, calling him back up to his feet. But catching the leg once again, again, as this time. John Willikers with the upper hand as Tristan falls outside of the ring. Getting him up. Datitude adjustment, picture perfect. And rolls through now. John with a second. Dad a two adjustment back to back. One, two, three. John Willikers picks up a huge victory. What an absolute matchup. That would have been huge for any main event. But here's the thing about this episode. We have two more matches left. But what a huge win for John Willikers as Tristan Silva. First time being fully pinned in a one-on-one -on -one matchup. Is that enough to guarantee a title shot by John Willikers. We will see as we move on to our next matchup of the evening. Coming to the ring first. In an ammo excursion matchup. He is one half of the grind. He is the man, Chandler Pitch. He is the tiger son and the tiger killer, Sakazuki. Sakazuki in his first ever ammo matchup making his way all the way from Fireball to face off in his first match here against Chandler Finch as I was having a conversation with Sakazuki earlier about just how excited he is to be in ammo wrestling he loves competing in this ring right now. As somewhat he would like to accomplish in the near future. 
And I think one of the things that he'd like to accomplish right off the bat is actually standing at ringside for this matchup in that junior heavyweight championship. Because he's one of the best juniors in the world today. And he is in an ammo ring right now with Chandler Finch. But right now Chandler not looking to be the example. He's trying to fight back, but both men having very different. And oh, that sit out shin breaker. But now Chandler Finch taking him all the way to the outside. Chandler Finch rolls to the outside looking at Sakazuki. Both men get back inside the ring here. As Chandler Finch, the more technical of the two in this matchup. As he rolls all the way around in that neck breaker. And that might be a benefit in this matchup. But Sakazuki known for his kicks. His ability to knock his opponent's head off with a simple lift of the knee and extension of his foot. As he's taken all the way to the outside. As Chandler Finch trying to hold on to that mom early momentum, going for that drop kick instead. Sending Sakazuki into the corner. What is he going to look for here? Taking him all the way up. And oh, tucking the head in. Super kick caught to Sakazuki. And a kick all the way underneath. Lift up. Man down. Power bomb. And calling him all the way back up to his feet. For that man down, that DDT connects. Picture perfect once again. One, two, but no Sakazuki strong kick out at two. Now just working, trying to slow the pace of this match. That's how he has to sort of play it out as he tries to dissect. Sakazuki's game plan early on in this matchup. But Sakazuki, big hip toss out of the stretch. Going for a kick wildly and missing the back of Chandler Finch as Chandler Finch sending him off the ropes. While working on the wrist and big elbow shot. As now Sakazuki, but possibly looking for a powerbomb instead. Chandler Finch rolls all the way through one. Two, big upset, but no. One, two, one, two, back and forth. But both men able to evade that three count. Chandler Finch already grabbing him down in that, that Komora lock. As Sakazuki getting out of it. And then now... Chandler Finch looking to lift him up. Dropping him top turnbuckle. Underhook looking for that pile driver, but Sakazuki with the reversal. And oh, that reverse DDT. And now up. Fireman carry position, Death Valley Driver. Dragging him in to the pinfall away from the ropes for only a two count. Nearly picked up the three. But now standing cutter by Sakazuki. Possibly the prelude. As Chandler Finch, you can just see the daze and that buzzsaw kick 
inbound and oh cuts through the head of Chandler Finch one two and only a two count for that buzzsaw kick Sakazuki backs right into that corner once again for a second buzz saw kick it cuts through once again and the lights have faded in the eyes of Chandler Finch three as Sakazuki picks up his first ammo victory What a matchup. Between both men. Sakazuki picking up that early victory and finishing the matchup with a combo. A buzzsaw kick straight through Chandler Finch. You see Leon Stark on the outside. That could possibly be the goal. But now we move on to our main event of the evening. Coming to the ring first in this monstrous main event. He is one half of the tag team champions and one third of the pit crew. He is the brass bear, Goro Mori. And his opponent, he is the Ammo World Champion, representing Harlem World. He is Shaq Hollow. match ahead as the ref sounds for the bell 
and already Kuro connects huge but check all the way back around into a DDT of his own well, now all oh, big knee or actually no that might have just been a kick straight to the face that's just a straight up fist drop as you can see Sheck very disrespectful in these past couple of weeks as we know who his number one contender is and that is Kenji Kobayashi but last week after a huge two out of three falls match against Mike Rummy, Kenji demanded that Sheck come out and acknowledge him as his number one contender, as what has become almost like an unwritten tradition at this point is some sort of just acknowledgement of who you're about to fight, who your opponent is, wanting to meet eye to eye and Sheck radio silent but right now Goro inside the ring with Sheck and all the way around it's Goro trying to put everything together Sheck also trying to do the same it's an arms race Early on in this matchup and getting that spine buster. The arms race continuing on. As Goro with a big reversal there to check as they've just been focusing heavy on those strikes. It's now Goro having him fireman carry position, dropping him on the top rope. No, oh, but now Goro dropped down power bomb. As you can see, this match so early on, foe fixated. Some of those heavy strikes from Shaq have now escalated into just some hammering throws, power bombs and drops, whatever you can think of, all ready. As this match still very much in its infancy. But Shaq not taking that as an excuse to fully swing momentum in his direction. Trying to get him back up onto his feet. And Doe all the way down already. Two. Just a two count from Sheck. Sheck looking down at him, but big catch by Goro Mori getting him up in that spinning brain buster. Feet check very diligently trying to piece all of this together, tossing him straight up in the air. The strength to get a man the size of Goro Mori up in the air. I have yet to acquire, but right now, check just staring down at Goro Mori. All the way back around and that lariat rings home right on target two, but no. Shaq has to be kicking out at about a one and a half, I believe. Getting him back upon his feet. 
Lariat to Lariat, this time grass arms. Swinging two in just a two count as this match will continue. Right now, Goro possibly looking for that inverted crush. And instead, reversing. Goro still finding a way to stand tall at the end of that exchange with that single leg takedown sort of style. A, short, a full on tackle. Roll through. Getting him up in the air, going. Connecting with all of these major blows. And oh, that clothesline once again. As Goro looking to remain. Shek stares down. And oh, cutting through with that spear. And just a two count still. At a point in the match. Oh, gosh. Discus Lariat. But at a point in a match, you just have to sort of sit and understand that this frustration of not being able to put your opponent down is going to continue for a while. But bare arm once again, this time holding on to that rope. Feet. This time getting him up inverted crush drops down from Goro. One, two, no, just a two count. I'm so excited. Almost knocked my mic over. It spins around from Goro. Into that power bomb. Rolls through Sinton. The weight that Goro likes to apply to his opponents continue on. And I mean that in a sort of theatrical and literal weight. He uses his weight very well in these matchups to make sure his opponent knows where and who he is is in full knowledge of him and then likes to continue the onslaught of offense through that but now Sheck getting up and oh power slam one two you no know, just a two count as this match but now Sheck Getting him up in the air, possibly looking for Corporal Hayes instead. Instead, Goro all the way into that Emerald Flosion and no. Taken aback by that combination by Goro Mori. Drop. King down into that power bomb. Put a little extra emphasis behind that one. Both men on the outside door of both trying to check shoulders there. Now up to a count of four as Goro up on the ropes. But 
Hot half. half. No, not half and half. And now Shaq into the cover. Two count there. We're back inside the ring. All the way around that kick into that DDT we saw very early in the match. He finds it again. But oh, that German. Kick to the midsection as Shaq gets him up in the air. Goro in to the buckle bomb. All the way around it. Oh, big shoulder check there by Goro. Rolls through once again. Chopping back and forth. Getting him all the way around. Emerald Flosion. One, two, no. Shaq Hollow still kicking out despite what this match has now become. This match has been going on for at least 10 minutes to 15 minutes. But now, Shaq up in the air. Drops down Goro, air raid crash, dragging him outside. One, two, no, still. But now, Shaq catching him, military press position into the power slam into the corner now looking for that spear he's been able to hit very effectively and cuts through Goro that could be it right there one two no still finding a way to kick out as Goro fighting off Now all the way around power slam. Not power slam, power bomb. And oh, it's a kick out at two. No matter what it is, this match is just determined to kick out at two. And oh, dragon suplex there by Goro. Rolls through that Sinton has been one of the few things that has been extremely consistent as he goes back to back with it. As the mid section of Shaq Hollow has to be in pieces. And now looking for that cover one, two, just the two. And a big kick straight to the back, but Shaq gets right up, trying to combo up some punches, exchanging them instead. Back and forth strikes. And now belly to belly by Shaq. Back up on his feet already. And Goro having to roll out. Trying to catch his breath possibly. After what an onslaught of offense that was. And Shaq turnabout is fair play. Using that same jawbreaker on the ropes. And oh, Inzu Lariat into the cover. Ref taking a minute to get in position, but two, three, no. Setting him up. And 
adjust that leg lock all the way around. And oh gosh. Taking his time in between. And again. Golly. At this point in the match, still having that strength in your legs alone. That's possibly looking purple haze, but Goro drops that elbow straight underneath the jaw. That wrestling sort of takedown. And Beck focusing on that arm. Calling Sheck up from Purple Haze to Emerald Flosion. One, two, and Sheck finding a way to kick out despite it. Despite it all. This is why these two men are champions. Their ability to take everything and to keep fighting and check still finding that way of kicking out. Goro still finding that way of kicking out. Everyone finding that way, that deepest darkest they're still digging they don't know how much is left in the tank that tank just keeps expanding the harder they fight but a kick out there by Goro and a double leg takedown calling Sheck back up to his feet Goro looking both men and no going for that instant that Uranagi caught to a clothesline as Shek might have his opening balling elbow drop picking up Goro into that power slam one Two, and still finding a way to kick out. Goro has to be inhuman at this point. Both men are. Big forearm strike straight to the face. And now just unleashing some of those punches. Belly to belly out of the corner. Exploding him almost the entire length of the ring. And oh, looking for that clothesline instead of caught into that Yuranagi that he was looking for earlier in the match possibly looking for a chop instead German suplex by Shaq Hollow and Goro lays motionless on the floor Goro big boot getting that separation that he needed Turning around, Bear Arm Lariat spins out Sheck Hollow for what has to be the fifth time of this matchup. One, two, three, as Goro Mori takes all the damage. and finds a way to walk out. <laughs> what an absolute clinic. Goro having this opportunity to celebrate. Is this a prelude of things to come? Kenji's music hits. And he's here. And 
Oh, both men meet face to face. And oh, I thought they might come to blows, but instead, Sheck taking that opportunity to get out of the ring. And Kenji stares on as we will see you next week for more ammo wrestling.